Hey guys and welcome back to the next installment of our series on the analytics pain review with Tableau. Um, if you haven't seen our first video, do go have a look at it. It's definitely worth your while. We had a look at the lines, bands and distributions. So um, today we will be covering clusters and trend lines. So let's get right to it. So what are clusters and trend lines and why are they important? Well, apart from enhancing your visualization, it also helps to make some of the invisible even more visible. Let's take this example. Um, we will go through this as well in this tutorial. So do not uh, worry if you don't understand yet. But in essence, um, this is a scatter plot taking a revenue or rather sales and profit onto the scatter plot by different manufacturers. And as you can see, we can sort of ourselves um, get some sort of clustering or some sort of idea on how to approach, you know, um, increasing perhaps sales or increasing profit at the end of the day. Now, if we use clusters and trend lines, we might end up with a picture looking like this. And this is way more valuable to take forward and investigate further. But for that, we will jump into Tableau. Right, so we'll again be using the super stored data. I will just connect to this in a blank instance of Tableau. And if you do remember what it's, what the fields that we've got, it's basically order information um, at the line level where we've got different categories, uh, different subcategories and products, as well as the sales, quantity, discount and profit numbers. Now we also will be looking at the manufacturer field in this specific tutorial, um, but it is basically building onto the previous one we've done. So let's go to the first sheet and build a basic visualization. For that, we will be taking the sales and putting that into our column, as well as taking profit and putting that into row. Now, as you can see, it just creates a basic scatter plot with one, <laughs> with one circle. Now, um, to make sure that we get it to the right level of detail, we can just take our manufacturer, which is a grouping that has already been created by Tableau on this data for us, but we'll be using the manufacturer of the um, products and putting that into detail. This ensures then that we end up with um, a mark on our visualization per manufacturer. We can obviously just improve a bit on the, um, the uh, what it looks like. So we can firstly just increase the size a little bit. And we can also just change this to a circle and not a, 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 a yeah, normal uh, F, empty circle. And now we can also add in just a border just to be able to distinguish them. And if you really wanted to just change the opacity slightly as well. All right, so we can see, as I've mentioned um, at the start here, we can already start investigating this with the scatter plot, which is super helpful by looking at this increase in sales whether you know we are expecting a you know increase in profit as you can see for instance this one at the top here let's look that's canon and you would you would see a yeah it's got quite a um in you know, comparison to the rest uh, quite a high number of sales but also high number of profit now on these two you can see also a high number of sales but the profit is not that high now these are obviously different manufacturers of different uh, materials but still there are lessons to be learned but this becomes a very bit, well, a bit difficult if we want to, to analyze it further. So how would we go about that saying, well, are these related to each other? Um, you know, are these related and is this a separate one? And that's just other, by the way. So unfortunately, those have been classified and we don't have a name or a, you know, a specific manufacturer name for it. But in essence, we will be able to analyze this in any case. Let's use um, now the the uh, clustering techniques of Tableau. Now, you will find them under the Analytics tab, as mentioned earlier, and as per all of the other um, functionality on the Analytics tab, you can just drag it onto the sheet and put it onto cluster. So immediately what you'll see, Tableau has created a view, and as, we've, um, yeah, as we had our intuition here, is that some of them have been classified together, you know, with fairly, um, I should say, medium amount of sales and um, medium to high profit. We also have this with very high profit and high um, sales at the, at the India in cluster three. And we also have low sales and low profit on the India. So that already is super helpful because we can then now basically see how to address certain issues. So for instance, how can we move, for instance, a, um, you know, somebody or a, a manufacturer's products which are quite low in sales 
as you can see here, or quite high in sales, um, but not high enough in profit, as we have one, for instance, there where the sales is lower, but our profit is much higher. So we can easily then um, start getting lessons from each of these. Now, it's important to note here as well that Tableau uses the k-means clustering algorithm. We won't go into the detail here, but if you are interested, you can you know, look up a bit more around that. But that's in essence what happens in the background. Now, we've ended up with the three clusters um, based on two variables, profit and sales, but it doesn't have to stop there. We can increase this and we will just go back to our data and add in other measures. In this case, we'll take in the discount measure and put that onto our into our cluster. Well, the average discount. And you can see immediately the picture changes. Now, these are all grouped together. There is a blue spot over there. And the blue and orange is much more um, in between each other. So that's quite an interesting um, observation because why would these two really be different? Now, as we're looking at the two-dimensional graph, looking at profit and sales, obviously the discount is not visible on this axis. We can just for our own purposes take the discount and put it onto our tooltip. And then if we do hover over, we'll be able to see the average discount on there. So why would these two be different? Now, they've got very similar sales and very, very similar profit. But as you can see, the, um, the average discount percentage is way different. So for instance, for SAFCO, our discount percentage is 14 and it's 21 in the blue cluster. So what we can derive from this, just looking at these marks is that blue has much higher um, discount percentage than the, than the orange. And that is quite something to know as well, because now we can also you know, analyze them a bit further and see what else can be applied seeing as they are related. And the same with the, the um, red ones as well. So it's got medium, um, I should say, uh, percentage um, of, of discount, but um, these all share similar characteristics. Now we could also change the number of clusters. So for instance, um, if we wanted more than three clusters, Tableau decided based on its, um, you know, on the algorithm it uses, the three are the best to use. So if we can, if we increase this, increase this to five, for instance, we can immediately see it chips off, um, you know, even more of our uh, manufacturers. And I guess these would be quite low discount, and these might be a little bit higher, or it might actually be because it's part of um, higher sales and lower profit. Now we'll just take that off and go back, because what we can see if and in this case we're back to the three clusters if we're not sure you know how this is put together we are able to go and edit sorry and go back and describe the clusters now this is where you will find all of the additional information you need around the technical stuff we're not going to go through this in you know in, in a lot of detail but what you can see here is um, a little bit of a description of the clusters how many items are in the clusters, you know, what the sum of profit is, what the sum of average sales, sorry, what the sum of sales is, and what the average discount is. And hereby you can already see, you know, if you were to look at between the orange and the blue, which is cluster one and two, you can already spot there's a massive difference between the discount as well as the profit and even the sales. So if they, um, you know, if you're uncertain on how these are put together, you can come to the describe screen. And if you want even more information, you just can go to the model and uh, get you know the, the further information that you might need. Okay, so what else is can okay, well can we basically do with this visualization? This is already quite handy, but if we were need to focus on um, which yeah which cluster or which cluster of um, you know merchants or manufacturers to focus on to Im to increase sales and drive sales efforts where would we get the best return on profit now we might say um, this cluster over here seeing as already the profit is quite high but this might not necessarily be the case how we can check that is to use another one of the analytics um, tabs here or the analytics functions it's by adding a trend line now it's simple, straightforward. Once again, you just drag it in. It will ask you what kind of trend line you, you need. Now there's quite a couple, as you can see, from, right from linear all the way through to using polynomial or logarithmic. For this case, we'll just use a linear one. Now, this is already now interesting to see because the slopes are different. 
and you can see that the orange slope is a bit um, more upwards than, than the, 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 well, the other two. Initially we had to focus or we mentioned that we want to focus on these ones, it might not be the best case. So with this, how do we know which is best? Pretty, it's not as a pretty picture, but what, what does this mean? So if we do hover over the trend line, we get additional information. And you can see the slope um, is defined by the 0 0.069 multiplied by sales plus the, um, you know, the, the intercept. So what that basically means is that for every increase in sale, so $1 increase in sale, the profit would increase with um, close to 7 cents. Now, that does not sound like, um, you know, what well, sounds like something good, but in case, um, you know, if you wanted to drive sales, you, or if you want to drive higher profit, you might want to focus on ones that have a bigger return. And for instance, you can see over here, the orange grouping, we have an increase of almost 10 cents for every additional amount of sales. So where would we be focusing on? Potentially on the one with the highest, but you need to be careful as well, is that um, we also have the p-value in there. I don't know if you've noticed that, but the p-value is obviously giving us um, you know, some indication of the statistical significance. And although we won't go and unpack this now, is it's always a good measure to look for a p-value less than 0 0.05. And as you can see, our red line doesn't have that. Neither does our blue line. So those aren't really good predictors in this case. Um, so do watch out for that. But what we can safely say, and you know, is that um, yeah, for the profit on the orange line, cluster number two, we have a p-value of less than 0.01. So that's quite quite statistically significant. And what our, what what we could suggest here is potentially to say these ones are the ones we need to drive harder, as a increase in sales might yield more um, profit in the end of the day. So how we can also check that is once you edit the trend line, you can always change the type. And as I mentioned, you know, if you take something like a polynomial, um, it does start looking way different and you will obviously need to be able to interpret this properly. Um, but for this case, we, we go back to our linear one. And if we put on the confidence bands, although it adds a lot of new lines, if we just focus on the cluster number two, for instance, the one that we had said is potentially the one to, to focus on. You can see how narrow the confidence bands are, especially, you know, if, if obviously with it increasing the sales, the confidence bands increase as well. It's not that much of a, um, you know, such a great predictor. But if you look at cluster one, for instance, or let's rather look at cluster three, you can see the confidence bands are massive. So very difficult to predict what that potentially would be. So. You've got your trend lines, you've got your clusters, and you are good to go. So this method is really helpful, as, you, as you've seen. Um, you can obviously add in a whole number of different, um, uh, if we just go and edit these clusters, if we can add in different kinds of measures in there. And each time we add in something different, you'll see that Tableau will automatically adjust the number of clusters and adjust the items that have been added in there. I will just undo that, but in essence, go and apply this on your own data and see what interesting insights you can come out with. I would like to thank you for joining us today. And I want to ask you to please do stay tuned and look out for the next episode, which is coming up as well. We will be focusing on box plots, forecasts and totals. That will also be the last episode in this series. Uh, it was really nice having you today and see you next time.